been searching for a podcast that shows up in your nightmares. One that shakes you to your core. Look no further. This is the Eerie Parlor. Short stories inspired by urban legends, real life experiences, folk tales, or nightmares. Take your seat and help yourself to the refreshments. Now we begin. Here's your host, Lady of the Woods. For the past seven decades on Halloween night, children ventured out in costumes with bright plastic pumpkin pails, tricking playmates and begging treats from neighbors, church elders, and the local PTA. This All Hallows' Eve in Cricksburg, Tennessee, a solitary child walks bravely into the gloaming. A polyester Casper the Friendly Ghost costume, wrinkled from long years packed away, covers her small body to the knees. She trudges from house to house, then lane to lane, growing wearier as the quarter hours pass. One small hand clasping a sputtering flashlight, the other clinging to a faded, heat-warped candy pail from the big superstore that drove out the local mom-and-pop shops two decades back. However, tonight's young traveler is not alone. An ancient and horrific evil, having broken free of its fetters, attached itself to one of the ubiquitous buckets and is now gorging its fill via this innocuous symbol of insatiable hunger and creeping fear. Unless Miss Faven can break the infernal tie holding the container intact, the fiend will nosh a whole new slew of sweet and tender tasty treats. In desperate straits, the child walks up the wisteria path and knocks at the eerie parlor's door. Hello? Trick or treat, please. Hello? Yes, hello. Come in, come in. Hi, do you got any candy? I stopped at all the houses in both neighborhoods just up from here, but if you ain't got none, I don't know where else to go. Poor dear, you look plum wore out. Come sit right here and I'll get you some tea and see if I have any candy. What's your name when you're not being Casper's ghost, honey? Thanks, ma'am. My name's Ankele Alada, but Mama calls me Kelly. What a pretty name. My name is Miss Faven. That's it. Climb on up and get comfy. And if I can't find where I hid the candy for myself, I'll bake you some cookies instead, okay? Do you want to put your pumpkin pail down? Uh-uh. I gotta fill it up all the way, like the big kids' buckets. I've been putting candy in it all night, but I think somebody's tricking me, cause whenever I look, it's going like if someone stole it right out. No matter how many doors I knock and watch them drop something right in too. Stealing a kid's candies is the very worst kind of Halloween trick. And I went all around my subdivision, and the one next to ours, and the apartments too. And then I went up the street, and the other street after that. And then I walked the tracks to here cause I'd already gone everywhere at home. A lot of kids say an old scary witch lady used to live here and that she comes out to catch kids stealing her apples on Halloween, but, but your house lights was on and your walking path from the driveway didn't look scary at all. Where do you live, Kelly? In Creeksburg, over by the elementary school. Sweetie, that's half the city away. No wonder you're exhausted. I already ate an apple from the cemetery tree for dinner 
while I was coming all the way here from Agriland Park. But it's no fair, my bucket is still empty, cause I know a lot of candy's been dropped in too. Here you go, little Miss Casper Kelly. Have a couple of saltines while I find that candy, okay? Two crackers for me, and two for pumpkin. Honey, they shouldn't be all that salty. They're really, really salty, Miss Faven. And the ones I give pumpkin again smoky. Oh dear, what a smell. Set your bucket down on the table, sweetie, so I can see what's what. Hmm, salt has holy properties, so it shouldn't smoke up the candy. But that smell, sulfurous, like bad eggs. And that sound, oh my gosh. Okay, drink up your tea, Kelly. There's more in the pitcher. And I'll fix that pumpkin right up for you. Okay, Miss Faven, and thank you for the tea. Uh, while I'm looking in the pantry, why don't you tell me how a cute Casper girl got this wonder of a bucket? I go to school over at Cricksburg Elementary, and today, a man came from City Hall with some boxes of antique holiday stuff for us free lunch kids. There were some vampires, and raggedy dolls, and cowboy and pocahontases, and astronaut ones. But there was only just one Casper the Ghost, and it still had a good mask. Then, they gave out pumpkin pails too, and said we should go meet our bus cause it was about bell time. So, after I got home from school, I put on Casper and went to the houses on my street that Mama said I could if she wasn't home from the diner yet. But my pumpkins felt empty still, so I went one street over. I even hit when Simon the Jerk and his friends biked by me because they'd steal my candy and I didn't want my bucket to be all empty and sad. After them, I just kept going because I heard tummy grumbling and Halloween candy always fixes that. And I caught the bestest luck on which houses had treats. And I didn't trick nobody, cause you get more treats from people you're nice to. But, Pumpkin there got nowhere near full. So, I just went to the next street, and the next one, and next, and next, and next. I really want to get enough to fill up Pumpkin before I go home. Did you find your candy yet, Miss Faven? I should get going if you ain't, so maybe the rest of the houses on your town's main might have some. Pumpkin just really wants to be all full, you know? Kelly... What exactly do you see inside of your bucket? Mmm, it's kind of yellow on the inside instead of orange, like if the faded part sunk all the way through and got all streaky like octopus squiggles. I learned about them when we had a field trip to the aquarium. They can squeeze through even the most tiniest holes, like to stick a pinky in. And I hear pumpkin stomach gurgles again now, like one time out on the road earlier when Simon went by. It was a big gurgles too, like if you forget breakfast and don't have nothing till supper. But now, the yellow streaks are squiggling and it's all hot smelling, like a match being striked. And it sounds now like pumpkins as hungry as me, or for me. But, but, that's just being tired and skipping supper to get a head start on the other kids, right? And not a for real haunted pumpkin? Can I go now, Miss Faven? If you ain't got candy, there's still houses I ain't been to. Just a second. Yes, here it is. My very own homemade salt water taffy from an old recipe. And in my mama's beautiful cut crystal bowl. It's nothing short of magical. And you can have as much as you want, sugar. Now listen to me, Kelly. Because it's super important. I think you might be right that something bad got caught up inside your pail but I'm gonna help you. I need you to set your pumpkin beside the big box, and the very second I open the lid, you let go with both hands and grab a salt water taffy from this bowl and pop it in your mouth. Then grab two more, one in each hand, and squeeze them hard. This might get scary, but you just stay strong and brave and true. Can you do that for me? Yes, Miss Faven. Okay, here we go. Ho oko tatala vesla no tatagaka. 
Sever the lies that blind the child, return the sounds of running wild. Let go the gourd with autumn smile, sever the ties, release this child! Rest now, child, while this fiend I bind. The demon cannot harm you here. Lay down your burden, let mind and body rest. Into the oubliette with you, fiend, while I tend to mortal needs. This child is pure, her world's not yours, so into the never forever you go. <sighs> what a relief, you poor little girl. Passed out from fright, but likely better for it, so memories and nightmares can't haunt you. Had you gone to any other house this side of the river, you'd have met your end as a hollowed-out husk, abandoned as soon as that fiend found a better carrier to a larger people buffet. Let me tuck you up on the couch with a warm blanket while I do what must be done. You can sleep in safety until your parents come. This creature, though, this hellspawn, I'd rather have helped with this, but it's better dealt with tonight. With my tinker, we could destroy it outright, but I can at least banish it back to the hells from whence it came. There is no place and no good use for it in any realm I know. It is an endless, ravening hunger, a desert dry, unquenchable thirst. As useful as it be, what you with a literal, bottomless spirit vacuum to have you on hand when night things get too restless and cause problems, that would sure be a boon to me. But, as mindless and powerful as you are, to hold on to any hope of containing, controlling you long term, I cannot do that on my own. And I'd be a fool to even try, as it only postpone your ravages. You'd eat right through the people of every city and every town and the entire tri-state area. You nearly succeeded when you found your freedom back in the 70s. You won't succeed at it now, nor ever again. Now, to get my shadow book and tools. Yes, that's the spell to do it. Now to light the candles. Ah. <sighs> Gonna be a long night. Best get to it. Knock once. Knock twice. Knock thrice. Quit this round. Be here no more. Ring once. Ring twice. Ring thrice. Ring, Ring once, once more. more. Your, Your threat, threat rings, rings false. false. Find, Find you. you. Banish, Banish you. you. Be done, Be done with, with you. you. Bells, Bells ring. ring. Clear, Clear the space. space. Knocks, Knocks cold. cold. Locks, Locks fast. fast. Hunger, Hunger no, no more, more for flesh. flesh. Human, Human born. born. From this From world, world, demon. demon. Be gone. Be gone. And done. Now, to make a phone call to worried parents and drive my little guest home.
listening to the Eerie Parlor. Our mission is to terrify you, <laughs> electrify, and rock you to your core. Each episode is a short horror story inspired by urban legends, real life experiences, folk tales, or nightmares. It's what we do. Join us next time, but in the meantime, find us on Instagram at The Eerie Parlor. You survived another episode. Next time, you may not be so lucky. <laughs> <laughs>